when I stopped working at 60, it was just so fantastic that I look back now at people running for the train and jumping on the bus and I almost want to stop them in the street and say, don't do this. While you're 40, do something you can. It's a trick. <laughs> you are being tricked into buying a house with a mortgage that ties you down until you're 65. Don't do it. Pull out while you're young and healthy. I live on a farm in a caravan and I discovered the farm when a friend of mine brought me up one work lunchtime to show me their horse which was here and I spotted this old caravan and I said is anyone using it and he said no I said can you ask the owner if I could use it and they did and the owner agreed I came in I cleaned it all out it was full of junk and polished it up a little bit and um, it's on the top of a hill so I got this most fantastic view of the Somerset levels um, beautiful sunsets from nearby. I can see the sea out the window. I was a teacher, teaching music, and uh, working full time, working weekends in order to prepare my lessons for the feed the troops for the next week. And uh, I was five thousand pound overdrawn, living in Bristol. I thought, how is this possible? I'm working every hour that God sends and I've still got no money at all. Also, I was looking at 60, the big 6-0 approaching in my life. And I thought, God, I might only have 10 healthy summers left. So I just thought, I'm going to stop this job. I didn't retire, I just quit really. And then uh, and I sold my house and that liberated all this and gave me the opportunity to redesign something else. So I thought from the 60 onwards, I'm gonna have adventures until I drop. I was thinking of saying it, saying it called an eternity leave. I wanted to be time rich. So I wanted to discover, could I live in a small space? Could I live in the countryside, you know, which is possibly slightly isolated? And I discovered, yes, I can to both of those questions but it was cold. These caravans are very thin and the floor is not insulated so for six months I had my bubble hat on and my thermals. I've got gas in a little cylinder for the gas fire. I don't use that too much because it creates a lot of condensation. And I have a little electric fire to put on sometimes. I have a, a board a collie dog which is like a huge hot water bottle so we cling on to each other when the snow is falling well I'm okay with being alone because I've been practicing it here you see and I have discovered that I am a social introvert which means that I enjoy company but then after an evening I can withdraw for four days and recharge myself by reading, playing music. And then I'm ready to come out again and I will socialize for an evening and I'll withdraw again. And I, I'm, I'm not particularly after a digital detox. I don't think I'm toxic. I have a digital toxic. I, I love the internet. It's a, a source of all knowledge, isn't it? Uh, it's a bit slower, the uh, signal pops them down 3G, 4G, 3G, you know, I can't work out what weather conditions change it. But yeah, I, I love digital technology. I'm here to write music as well, so I've got my laptop here. Uh, but I haven't had a problem with that. I'm missing a Wi-Fi, I guess, broadband. Uh, 4G isn't quite the same. You have to be a bit patient, you know. Uh, but uh, it's okay. I think you can travel these days and still be connected. Well, I would say that it's not an instant thing you can go out and buy. You've got to untangle yourself from your life. 
and that takes a while to close down the things you've created like you close down your job you know that took me six months to work out the period of you know notice and then you've got to untangle yourself from your house you've got to declutter you've got to sell your, you know that takes a year you've got to be so patient and then you've got to buy a van I've waited you know it takes me eight months to build the van a friend of mine is building it for me but I've got to sort of patience so patience is the big virtue I think you need it's like turning around an ocean liner you've got to be it takes a while to divert your life from one way to another but I'm getting near I'm getting near the sort of cast off now which is exciting but I would say it's taken me three years to get to this point <laughs> Okay, I wanted the van to be rustic. I like, if you saw my house in Bristol, I spent 20 years stripping every bit of paint. I don't like paint. I like to see wood. I like to think it grew in a forest once. And so I wanted, to, I wanted it to be rustic and I wanted to have some sort of eco credentials insofar it was made of recycled products. So the wood is from my houses in Bristol and uh, I've got a bit of a church pew you know, I wanted it to be recycled wood and, and it looks beautiful. My van, as you've seen, is a part music studio. So I'll have three guitars with me, a keyboard, laptop. So I'm hoping as I travel, I'll bump into musicians. We'll sit and record outside under the awning in the sunshine. Uh, get back in the van, move along, find some more musicians, add to the pot and um, you know come up with some musical project that's a combination of my trial inspired by what I see and inspired by the people I meet I find with musicians if you spend an evening sitting around a fire playing music with them they're your brothers and sisters for the rest of your life so I'm hoping to get a, a big community of people I can pop in to see as I wander about uh, and, and also I do think that when you travel you do need a little bit of a focus and that's going to be my focus. My plan is to put everything in here in storage and then disappear. First of all I'm going to go to Scotland. I love mountains so I'm heading anywhere where there's mountains, so Wales, Lake District. But I need to practice with the van, get confident with the driving, it's a big vehicle for me. And uh, so I'm going to go to Scotland, I'm going to climb some of the Munros, you know, uh, and I'm going to take the dog with me and we're going to just practice. Uh, Scotland is the perfect place for wild camping, pull up on the lock side. Um, I, you know, I'm going to make sure it works and then come the cold weather, I'll head south across the channel. I'd like to start in Portugal, Spain. And I'm just going to follow the temperature gradient. So I'm going to have a thermometer on the dashboard, and wherever it goes up, I'm going to go that way. Having looked on Facebook at the alternative living groups, one of the most notable things I have seen is how happy people seem to be. And so I'm really quite excited to plug into this community and meet these good people out on the road who will live in a a life that's fallen between the cracks of society but they seem to be having a good time and, uh, and they have good values they're interested in the environment and sustainability so I'm looking forward to meeting this community of people you know who have broken free of the shackles of our modern society mm -hmm.